This is the only place in the world that you go work with moon rocks on the scale that we work with them and handle them every day. It's so exciting that the astronauts brought back the samples and they're here at Johnson Space Center. My name is Andrea Beatrice Mosey. I've been working here at NASA for 47 years. My name is Juliana Gross. I am the deputy curator for the Apollo samples. My job rocks, obviously. On a daily basis, I work with moon rocks. There were six missions that went to the moon from 1969 to 1972, and we brought back 842 pounds of rocks, pebbles, and soil. We're studying moon rocks because we want to learn about our own history. We want to learn about how Earth formed, where life comes from, where's the water coming from. And all that information is lost on Earth, so we need to find that someplace else that hasn't changed so we can still find that original information. And that's on the moon. The moon doesn't have any wind and water and rain. The moon is geologically inactive, so nothing has changed. It has recorded everything since its formation. So it has recorded how the sun has changed over time. It recorded how much stuff got delivered to the moon, like hit the moon over time. We can look at the age of these rocks and then make assumptions of like what was delivered at what time. So the moon is like a time capsule or a time machine. We can go back in time and look at it. The moon rocks are stored here at Johnson Space Center in our pristine sample vault and our return sample vault. We actually break the rocks, document the samples, find out exactly what the scientist or the researcher is looking for, and we allocate or send the samples to them to do their research. You cannot actually touch the samples with the bare hand. If, in fact, I touch the samples with my bare hands, then I'm adding the oil to the samples. So when the researchers actually do their analysis, they're not researching what was actually found on the moon. They're researching what we have here on Earth. We work in a clean room lab. We have microscopes that we keep covered with the bag when we go out, or you have data that you're working on your, in your data pack. Everything we do here is to protect the samples from earthly environments. You need to keep the room clean. When your parents tell you to go and clean up your room, just think about that. I want to work in the lab with the moon rocks. I better learn how to clean up this room. All the Apollo samples are special, but they are not representative for the rest of the moon. And so that's one of the reasons why we are going back to the moon with the Artemis missions, and we're going to go to a south polar region. The astronauts actually got geology training so that they could recognize different rock type. When we train the astronauts, we want them to be able to pick up rocks that are representative of that landing site, but we also want them to pick up rocks that are very diverse, so we really can get a better idea of what the geology is like in that region. Not just the landing site, but the overall region. And that's why this is so fun, because the Artemis astronauts will learn from the Apollo astronauts, and they will learn from the Apollo samples them to go back to the moon and pick up new samples that are more representative. I've been here for 47 years because I actually love what I do. The samples from Apollo, it sparked what we're doing now. So we continue to do that same research. We continue with exploration and that is NASA's mission. If you're interested in becoming a processor of moon rocks, you should start studying now earth science and geology. It's a good thing to find a mentor. There are also teachers and counselors that will assist you. Don't be afraid to reach out to them. There's no dumb question. So you need to be able to open up, ask the questions. You need to be present, but present does not mean just being in the class. Presence means participating, asking the question, doing your homework, and doing all the things that you need to do to be successful. No, I never thought that I could work for NASA. That, that was like, NASA was just like big shiny, oh, only like geniuses were there, right? I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not good enough for that. And here I am. Don't listen to anybody who tells you you can't do things or you're not smart enough or like nah, 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 whatever, don't listen to them because they're wrong. Because what that really means is that you haven't found the right people to teach you in the right way that is good for you. Don't give up, stay curious, ask questions, follow your heart, 
just keep trying and you will eventually get there.